Performance Pipe's Fusion videos should be used in conjunction with Performance Pipe's recommended fusion procedures published in PP750. These procedures are in alignment with ASTM F2620 standard practice for heat fusion joining of polyethylene pipe and fittings and can be used with all pipe and fittings manufactured by Performance Pipe, Chevron Phillips Chemical, Drisco Pipe, Piping Products, and Plexo Pipe with the exception of Drisco Pipe 7000 and 8000 series piping products. Socket fusion involves the heat fusion of a pipe onto one side of a socket fitting to serve as a connection that can be fused to another pipe or fitting. In socket fusion, the following equipment is required. A chamfering tool. A depth gauge. Some manufacturers combine the chamfering tool and depth gauge. A cold ring clamp. A heating tool with male and female socket faces. Heating tool male and female socket faces should meet ASTM 1056 socket fusion tools for use in socket fusion, joining polyethylene pipe or tubing and fittings. You'll also need timing equipment such as a watch with a second hand. Holding tools are desirable for 2 inch IPS or larger pipe and fittings. Clean work gloves are suggested. Performance Pipe recommends the following heating tool surface temperature. Where heating tool surfaces will contact the main or the fitting, all points on both heating tool surfaces must be within the prescribed minimum and maximum temperatures before you begin. Use a pyrometer to verify the actual surface temperature. Install the correct faces on the heating tool and heat to the correct surface temperature. The male and female socket faces on the heating tool must be clean. The pipe or tubing end must be squarely cut. If the end is not squarely cut, use a plastic pipe cutter or handsaw and cut the pipe or tubing end squarely. When using a wheel type pipe cutter, be sure the cutter wheel does not thread down the pipe. Cut off all partial cuts before fusion. On larger pipes, toe in may need to be removed before fusion. For all pipe and tubing sizes, chamfer the end to remove the sharp outer edge on the OD. Remove all burrs from the inside of pipe ends. Make sure the pipe or tubing end is clean, dry, and free of foreign substances. Wipe with a clean, dry, lint-free cotton cloth or paper towel. Do not touch clean surfaces with your hands. Place the depth gauge snugly over the chamfered end of the pipe and clamp the cold ring clamp on the pipe or tubing OD immediately behind the depth gauge. Remove the depth gauge. Install the fitting holder if used and wipe the fitting socket with a clean, dry, lint-free cotton cloth or paper towel. Do not touch clean surfaces with your hands. Refer to ASTM F2620 or Performance Pipe Bulletin 750 for the recommended heating and cooling times for the correct pipe size. In socket fusion, there's an interference fit between the pipe or tubing and the socket. That is, the socket is slightly smaller than the pipe. They won't fit together cold. Heating tool faces are tapered, which produces a tapered melt. Therefore, the pipe or tubing and fitting will tend to push away from the heating tool during heating and will tend to push apart when first joined together. It is necessary to hold the pipe and fitting against the heater faces during heating and hold them together while fusing. When using a socket coupling to join coiled pipe, if possible, S the pipes on either side of the coupling to compensate for coil curvature and make it easier to join the second pipe to the coupling. Verify that the heating tool is maintaining the correct temperature with a pyrometer. First, push the socket fitting onto the male socket face. The socket fitting must bottom out completely and be held against the back surface of the male heater face. Push the pipe or tubing end into the female socket face. The cold ring clamp must be completely against the female socket face and held in place. The heating time starts when the cold ring is against the female heater face. 
hold the fitting and the pipe or tubing in place against the heater faces for the heating time in ASTM F2620 or Performance Pipe Bulletin 750. When fusing dissimilar materials like high density pipe or fitting to medium density pipe or fitting, start with heating the high density material first, then proceed with the medium density. Preheat the high density component. The preheat time is the difference between the medium density and high density times. If heat times are within 10% of each other, the longer heating time may be used for both components. Do not twist the pipe the fitting, or the heating tool. At the end of the heating time, quickly and simultaneously remove the pipe and fitting from the heating tool using a snap action. Remove the pipe and fitting straight out from the heating tool faces. Do not twist or displace the melt. If the pipe or fitting are removed at an angle or twisted, melt can be displaced and the joint may leak or fail. Quickly check the melt pattern on the pipe end and the fitting socket. The surfaces should be 100% melted with no cold spots. If the melt is not complete, do not continue with the joint. Cut off the melted pipe end, use a new fitting, and start over from step one. Do not reuse a melted fitting. If the melt is correct, continue the joining procedure. Within three seconds after removing from the heating tool, Firmly push the pipe end and the socket fitting straight together until the cold ring clamp makes firm contact with the end of the socket fitting. Grasp the pipe behind the cold ring clamp. Pushing on the cold ring clamp handle can cause slippage or a crooked joint. Hold the pipe firmly together for the cooling time in F2620 or Performance Pipe Bulletin 750. Do not twist the pipe or fitting. If joined at an angle or misaligned, the joint may leak or fail. Holding force may be relaxed when the cooling time ends. After an additional undisturbed cooling time, the cold ring clamp may be removed. Then, testing, burial, or fusing the other end of the fitting can be performed. Inspect the end of the socket fitting at the pipe. There should be a clear impression of the cold ring clamp onto the melted surface at the end of the fitting with no visible gaps or voids around the pipe and socket melt bead. The pipe and fitting should be aligned straight with each other. Refer to ASTM F2620 or Performance Pipe Bulletin 750 for a troubleshooting guide with pictures of acceptable and unacceptable fusions.